Do you live on a low income? Is it a struggle for you? If it is, I understand your pain. I live on just a little over $1,200 a month myself. It's probably the least amount of money I've had to live on most of my adult life. And yet, there are ways to make it work. And I'm going to talk about that today. This is a little bit of a difficult topic to talk about finances at all because it, as you probably know, in our society, it is a little bit of a taboo to talk about money and finance related things. But it is important because, first of all, we have to kind of drop that taboo. It should not be a taboo to talk about finances of any kind. In fact, I've really been encouraged by a lot of the YouTube creators who really talk honestly about what they make or don't make on YouTube. I think that's really important information for other people that are um, trying to start a channel or, or grow their channel. But back to the issue at hand, which is <laughs> living on very little. I'm not going to pretend it's easy. It's not at all easy. I have less disposable income than I've ever had in my life. And yet it works. I make it work. And also I get a lot of assistance from government programs that help make it work. But let's back up a second and talk about the years leading up to when I retired. For many years, I used to watch a lot of the finance gurus, you know, people like Susie Orman and, and people like that who talked about how, oh, you have to have a half a million or a million dollars saved up or invested or whatever to retire. There's no way you can live on less than that. It's impossible. You might as well give up if you're not going to have at least a half a million dollars. And that was 20 years ago. They were talking that now it's probably like one to two million dollars. And I used to hear that and I'd get really depressed because obviously I wasn't going to make that kind of money ever to be able to save that kind of money or have that investment. The, the boat had already sailed for me. I basically was not going to get there, was not going to have that kind of income. And so I stopped watching stuff like that because it really was depressing to me. I didn't, you know, all, all the gurus that talk about, oh, invest in real estate and all that. Well, the boat had sailed. I, there's no way I was going to catch up to that and be able to start investing it in my 50s or close to 50 and stuff like that. So I had to think about how I was actually going to do this. I knew I was going to have Social Security when I retired. It wasn't going to be a lot. Um, and so for the first time in my life, when I retired, I basically had to look on getting into government assistance. I'd never had government assistance before that, before the age of 62. And, you know, it was a little sobering to even think about doing that, but it's there for a reason. It's there to help people who really don't have an enough or doesn't, don't have anything. And so... I kind of had to swallow my pride on that and think that, well, I've not had to do it before in my life. And, and by the way, no shade on anybody that has to do it because, frankly, we don't have enough programs in this country to help people in need, especially housing programs. So one of the things that really helped, when, I, of course, when I first retired, I was almost 63, and I even had less money live, uh, to live on a month, probably about $300 less than I do right now. And so the first thing I had to think about was where was I going to live? Where was I going to live? Because I was, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of income. So the, the thing I had to look for was what we call subsidized housing. Uh, some people call it Section 8. There's lots of different names for it. But you have to kind of figure out what you're going to do with that. In other words, where are you going to go? Now, for me, I didn't have to stay in a specific area. Some people do because of family or whatever. I could go anywhere. And I found a small town to live in that had some senior subsidized housing. And I got on a list. Fortunately, it was not a really long list. It only took me about seven months to get into an apartment. And so the apartment that I'm living in now is... Um, uh, HUD housing, HUD housing, and I basically got on a list um, directly with the the apartments, and I only pay about a third of my income plus give or take uh, some electric uh, subsidies they add in or take away or something like that, and so my rent is two hundred right at the moment two hundred twenty seven dollars a month. 
which is awesome. I haven't paid $227 a month for rent since I was probably just out of college back in the 70s. So that's pretty amazing. And it's decent housing. It's not luxury or anything, but it's decent housing. And so that's the first thing that saved me. So a lot of people are on housing lists and they're on them for years. I mean, I've even put in for lists in other places to potentially move and it's still going to take a year, two years from now. And I've applied in the last couple of years. But if you go to, if you have the flexibility to go to smaller town America, believe it or not, you can get into places relatively quickly if you're low income, whether it's seniors or even if you're not a senior, if you're a younger person with a family. So you have to have flexibility of where you're willing to go. And you have to just get on a b- whole bunch of, ap- you have to do a bunch of applications to get in there. But that's the thing that saved me, is being able to pay less rent. Because if I was trying to pay $700 a month rent and only bringing in a little over $1,200 a month, I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't be able to survive that. And I know I've, I've already gotten some messages or comments from people who do pay a lot in rent and have very little extra to live on. Uh, my heart goes out to you. I would just suggest you try to find a way to get into subsidized housing where you're only paying no more than 30% of your income for rent. So that's the first thing that helps me. So that's the first government program I'm on basically is subsidized housing. And that's, that helps me survive. Second of all, I am actually on Medicaid. And uh, in my state, Medicaid is actually pretty good. It covers everything that Medicare doesn't cover because I'm also obviously on Medicare because I'm over 65. And I, I think to me that's, other than my rent, the Medicaid is probably my biggest benefit. Um, we're going to talk in a few minutes. I'm going to talk in a few minutes about uh, kind of the hazards of that too. And, and kind of what is difficult about being on, um, government assistance. But anyway, for now, those are the two best things. I also do get food stamps, but very little. I get right now, um, there's been expanded benefits during the public health crisis of the last two or three years. But, but basically, my basic benefit is $59 a month, which is not very much in food stamps. Um, the next thing I get is energy assistance for my electric bill. And it doesn't cover everything, like 100%. Probably it covers about half the year of electricity. And then I have to pay, you know, after that, after the F, and then reapply the next year. So I do have that, and that's a real benefit. Um, I also get, um, some meal assistance. I don't, we used to have meals on wheels in the town I live in, but it went away actually. But then we got some sort of program where we can get meals from a restaurant in town. I do, um, take advantage of that. I do get that. So I get a few meals a month basically that are free that I can get out of a restaurant. So things like that have really saved my life. They really have. I I never even knew stuff like this existed before I ever had to be on government assistance. And I know that many, many seniors in particular live in poverty. They live at the poverty level or just above, or and they really do need this assistance. In fact, we probably need more assistance than we get. But I am grateful. I am so grateful to have this assistance. I, I cannot even tell you how grateful I am. So here's the double-edged sword of it all though. So while I can live on my $1,200 a month basically, and if I didn't have credit card debt that I was trying to pay off right now, I discussed that in a previous video on on, uh, going into a no debt year, no buy year, I have to pay that off first. But once I do, I would have an extra probably $400 a month to save for emergencies or, you know, things like my dental thing that wasn't covered by Medicaid, things like that. And that is important. You've got to be able to save even if you live on very little. So find ways to get assistance in any way you can and be able to save a little bit for the emergencies, which still will occur. So that being said, I wanted to mention that this is a little bit like being in a a velvet prison. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't have a really great name to call it. Velvet prison seems kind of apropos. Um, and that is, it's great to be on these programs, but here's the deal. I can't earn extra money. If I earn extra money, 
I think I can earn up to maybe about an extra $300 a month without really getting into trouble. But beyond that, I would lose my Medicaid, which means now I would have to pay more for a supplemental plan to my Medicare. I would have to pay the Medicare Part B premium, which right now is paid by Medicaid. So that right there would cost me over $300 a month. I would have to pay more in rent. Fortunately, once you're already in subsidized housing, you basically wouldn't get kicked out for earning more, but you're going to have to pay more in rent. I would have to do that. I would lose the little amount of food stamp benefit I get. I probably wouldn't qualify for the energy assistance. So basically, just if I went out and got a part-time job that earned, let's say, $600 a month, it wouldn't be worth it because I would lose that in the benefits I get. And so they kind of, the system kind of keeps you trapped in this, and I would assume this applies to anyone, no matter what their age, who's on government assistance. People always say, well, why don't you go ahead and get a job or something? Well, if I were young and, and physically more capable than I am or whatever, yeah, obviously, I, I worked most of my adult life. But I, I am older. I'm retired. I wouldn't want to work more than part-time. And if I work part-time... I basically then lose. And this is one of the, actually, for me, this is a real question when it comes to YouTube because I started this channel. Hope I'm hoping that someday I do make money on this channel through AdSense or, or any other types of um, assistance, such as sponsorships or whatever. But the thing is, I am taking a risk by doing that. I start earning on here and I will lose some of the assistance that I get, which to me, the Medicaid is probably the biggest one. And that's something I'm going to have to deal with when the time comes and make a decision about. I may, I may decide not to, not to ever take AdSense or something like that. I don't know. At this point in time, I really don't know. It's a tough call for me. I would like to think that I could do my channel and earn, you know, and of course, if I ever started earning a lot of money, then obviously it's no big deal. Then I would earn enough to offset what I'm losing and that would be fine. So that's kind of the situation. That's how I live. I actually will tell you that I'm pretty comfortable in, in this situation and where I live right now and how I live. Um, I don't have the money for emergencies. If I had an emergency fund of a few thousand dollars, I would feel a lot more comfortable because it would cover things like just happened to me a couple of months ago. So beyond that, though, I, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful that I can live, that there are programs in place to help people who are not making enough in Social Security or in retirement or, or whatever. That's how I do it at this point in time. So far, so good for the most part, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future and, uh, you know, take it from there. So anyway, hopefully maybe that gave you some insight into the kinds of things that have helped me. Um, I don't know what your situation is. Some of you may be struggling. Maybe I have a feeling a lot of people pay more in rent than they're comfortable. So again, my suggestion would be if there's any way that you could go somewhere, get on a list for a place that you could get into fairly quickly and it would only take a third of your income for rent. That would be my best suggestion for how you really can be uh, in a better situation financially. So anyway, until next time, be well, keep moving forward, hang in there, take care, bye.